Thank you.
Shut the oh fuck up, you little tater tot numbers. bitch. We are Turkish, two minutes and 35 Turkish. seconds into this video. I'm just as gay as mind. the rest of us, motherfucker. It feels just the same. Another sunny day in LA. Everything is fine, so they say. Wonder what the news is today. Cause I know that every day I'm at this fucking job. Sun is streaming. Watch him on the clock. Bro, the Lyra does not need this. Crazy people love playing Hearts of Iron anymore. Eating pussy is the basic, bare minimum thing you can do. Where did they find these people, dude? And women want to have sex. Your job is posting. You're gay. Oh God, I hate women so much. On that club.
fantastic afternoon, a fantastic pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Asan Piker, and this is the Hazard Broadcast coming to you live from sunny Texas, Austin, Texas. And I'm at Nicholas Pollum's house. Um, for those of you who don't know, Nicholas Pollum, NMP Law. Normally he'd be live around this time, actually, but he's not because we are going to be on his. Uh, we're going to be on his stream later for OTK Game Day. We're going to be playing basketball. Did he buy you a purse as well? I don't. How have the others of the house treated you so far? Uh, well, I'll tell you this much. They didn't see me at all. I came in in the shroud of darkness in the middle of the night. I came in at around, I came in at like 12. I, I landed, I landed uh, in Austin, Texas, and I basically broke in, yeah. I landed in Austin, Texas, and I, I, I came straight to Nick's house, and I passed the fuck out. That's it. Bro was tweeting politics at second uh, at two a.m. When was I tweeting politics? Fro looks good though. Yeah, I'm I'm a little insecure about my hair right now. It's fucking crazy. I gotta fix it, but anyway, yeah, I parachuted in. No, I didn't even knock. I straight, I straight up just broke in, dude. Is that a white beard there? Yes. You'll be farming some grape and MP clips, I hope. Yeah. 
What if his OTK event won't ask him to be there? I don't think so because he doesn't go outside, but it'd be really funny if he was. And we're working on something on that, on that end as well. Um, but did you fly first class brother? It is a three hour flight. I don't think they even have first class. They do have business, but it's like the same as regular, uh, regular seats. It's just a little bit law. Uh, it's a little bit bigger. Why are you mirrored? Did you mention that already? It's like 7 a.m. here. What? Am I mirrored? Huh. I don't know if I'm mirrored or not, but if you're wondering why it's fucking uh, early, earlier than usual, a lot earlier than usual, it's because I'm in Texas. And the reason why I'm in Texas is, like I said, because I'm going to be playing some basketball. You can get me to fly anywhere, honestly. Like, you can straight up get me to go anywhere on the fucking planet. If you're like, Hassan, there's an opportunity for you to ball. There's an opportunity for you to ball there. I'll be like, I'm there. Just say no more, fam. Fuck it. Not even an issue for me at all. I'm, it's sick. I'm diseased like that. I got the, I got the disease in me. How do I do, 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 do? How do I change streamer mode? I don't want it to be streamer mode. General, my chat arena. I'm like trying to fix it right now. Link previews enable. Okay, there it is. All right, now now we should be fine. Yep. Okay. Send his man in North Korea, brother. If Kim Jong asked me personally, if Kim Jong asked me personally, yo, I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you balled up. You're going to fucking ball up on some Koreans. I'd be like, I would be there. I wouldn't even, it would be not a question. Okay. So good of you to travel to Texas and build brick houses. Exactly. There's a housing market situation going on in Austin, Texas, and I'm here to solve it with my bricks. I'm bricked up. Did Mr. Archer make you a gift basket? Yes, he did. So anyway, end of the broadcast, uh, got ready. You guys already know, uh, you know, got ready to fly out. Didn't think I would make it to my flight. So what else is new, right? But I, uh, I, I, I barely get on the flight. It's fine. It's not a big deal. We're ready. We're there. Uh, shit happens. I fly in, uh, it's 5 a.m. Or not 5 a.m., what am I saying? It's not 5 a.m. I fly in, it's 12 a.m. You know, 30, 40 minute car ride, boom, 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 I'm here. I come in, thank God Mr. Arthur was there to open the door for me so I didn't get tackled by the dogs. I was a little worried about that, I won't lie. Um, but uh, yeah, and I'm here. And that's it. Wait, how do I change the way that my fucking profile looks? I don't want to. My Instagram is like. All right, anyway, here. Here it is, folks. If you want to see. Boom, boom, boom. A fresh hell every single day. And it speaks genocide defenders. At least we got this. Maybe it ain't all that bad. Saw that. That was sick. Got this nice little welcome basket. They had a quest bar in there, thank God. Because I was desperate for some extra... I was desperate for some extra uh, uh, protein. Uh, immediately ordered like a shit ton of, of extra protein to the house. Got me got me some of my... Some of my pro... They call me the pro goat. No zin. I know. No zin of the welcome basket. It is what it is. Uh, and then after that, this morning, this uh, slammed some creatine with the cool. man. You crack a Coke Zero? Is, is literally not even 10 a.m. right now. It, it's done. Boring. Yeah, disgusting. I did it too. You can see it on my TikTok. Did you try it his way? Yes, and I also posted on my TikTok doing it that way. Um... That's the only way to do it. Yeah. 
but that's it we got uh, aren't there pills for that yeah did you see the sketch pbm game um i heard that he dropped 88 points on him why was there a creator league game that was happening where was the creator league game that was happening why was not why was i not made aware of the creator league game that was happening these are a lot of my questions i have a lot of questions i don't personally understand it um Like, why was I not invited to this shit? Blacklisted? Foot on line. Yeah, he drew. Is that method approved by Robert F. Kennedy Jr.? Bro is washed. Looks like a 1v1 to me. Yeah, they should put me on there. They should put me on that 1v1, you know? They don't know you, little bro. <laughs> You're gonna pirate the Tyson match? Yeah. So here's the other thing, by the way. I am I am planning on potentially doing another stream after I'm done. Uh after the the after OTK game day, I'm planning on doing another stream uh as well. Maybe. We I haven't decided if I have time and the space. Not with Maya. Maya is tomorrow. Hair is crazy, by the way. I know, man. I know. Game. <laughs> check out, check out. I'm good, I'm good. Damn. Game. <laughs> Almost died. Almost die right there. Doing a ban appeal stream with Nick. Yeah, I don't know what he wants us to do, but we'll do some stuff, obviously. Uh, we'll make some content happen tomorrow on Nick's stream. And then after that, um, I haven't really figured out exactly what I'm going to do. But at some point, I'm going to go to Alveus to do a stream with Maya. So, I hear you complain about your hair as a bald man. It's frustrating. Still appreciate it. Yeah, it's true. Could be worse. Will Maya let you ride Winnie? Uh, I did ask to see if I could like go and uh, to to go and like ride horsies, uh, not Maya's horsey, but just horsies in general. Hasanabi, I think you are wrong politically. I challenge you to a debate. I'm good, man. Thanks. You've owned me. You've destroyed me. Stop by Osmongol's house. Yeah, I'm going to roll up to his house and be like, debate. I'm going to do what that chatter is doing and be like, I challenge you. Osmongol, I challenge you to a debat. I challenge you to a debat. What the hell? Oh, what the hell? I do not agree with you, Osmongol. Hasanabi, I think you are right politically. I challenge you to debat. Um, playlist for later. Is that we behind you? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's marijuana. Yeah, you already know it. Um, Donald Trump went live and he popped off my fucking dramatic queen. Uh, we're gonna talk about that. Obviously, let's blast off live early from Texas. Hold on, where the fuck's the cap lock? Caps lock. Okay, live and early from Austin, Texas. Before I play B-ball. Trump gives new zesty speech Trump gives new zesty speech RFK junior pick ruin American health care Matt Pedogates leaks And more in this 
Is Austin also in Texas? No. Why are people asking about Austin? Are you team Kachi or team Nora? Bro, I don't know anything, dude. I don't know anything about that. That's like, I don't even know what you're saying. I, I just like, I have no opinions on this, okay? I feel like this is how people... I feel like this is how people think when I ask them about like questions related to politics where they're like, what? It's like asking me, uh, you know, how many genders are there? It's like, I don't know. I just got here. That's one debate you don't want to part in. Trust me. Where's your boyfriend? Where's your butt buddy? He's your boyfriend who Austin. No, I'm fucking Nick now. Um, do we have a blast off meme that's actually good or no? New Texas studio blast off. Yep. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. I like that. Thank you. Henry and or Hank. I like that one. Okay. We're going to use that. Yeah, I am just looking. Don't hurt me. What does that mean? What? I don't even know what you're saying. Oh, the other thing is like I did the conventional deadlifts, right? If you remember, I did the conventional deadlifts and like my back has been a little tight, especially after yesterday when I balled yesterday in the morning. And now I'm like now and then I went on a flight. Now I got on a fucking flight and that didn't help my back either. So now I'm like kind of tight right before this basketball game, which is annoying. So I asked Nick, I was like, bro, do you have one of those like massage guns? Cause like everybody gets like free shit in the streaming world, you know? So I thought he probably got like a massage gun. Like he definitely has one. And he's like, oh, I have one. I just don't know where it is. So I ordered a massage gun cause we couldn't find it. We couldn't find his, duh, obviously. So I ordered one. Problem is, it's like a Target brand. It's like shitty. And it fucking hasn't, like, it's not charging up for some reason. <laughs> yeah, Elon Musk's doge is hiring. Here's the kind of person he's looking for. We're going to cover that, obviously. And he's like only letting you, uh, he's only letting you join uh, or apply if you're, a fucking Twitter blue check mark user because that's the only way to send applications to the doge to the fucking stupid ass doge agency you came to a place a Jewish version of stood on the bima near the holy Torah scroll and pretended to be congregants you have no shame no decency no clue what you're talking about it's so funny because like Code Pink is run by an old Jewish lady so the idea that you're like, oh, you're a being anti-Semitic to me, Dana Fash, in my synagogue is like, yeah, dude, the people that are, you know, the people that are confronting you, like, look, the people that are confronting you are also Jewish. Yo, what's up? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Yeah, I got not one, two boyfriends now. I got Mr. Archer and I got fucking Nick Pollum. He said Butler. The hell is this brand? I don't even know what it is. It's a good day for a good day. Oh, this is trash. I'm not gonna lie. Damn. Texas coffee is a little. Ugh. I'm a particular guy. <sighs> Can you kiss more men soon? You got it. You're in Asma City now. What are you going to do about that? Yeah, I got to check in with him, dude. This is Asmongold's town. I got to check in with him. I got to be like, yo, 
Yo, my bad. I'm so sorry. I said racism is bad. I promise. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I promise. Democrats and Pierre openly define court rulings from the state Supreme Court to benefit Bob Casey. People violate laws anytime they want. The Bucks County Commissioner says she cast a vote Thursday to count a certain deficient provisional ballots previously barred by court order. Oh my God, they're doing the steal. Oh, I love that. That's respect. I like that. Texas coffee is bad because it has no woke in it. Yeah. Listen, if you are not a they, them, non-binary, uh, asexual, biromantic, uh, septum piercing wearing barista that is reading Ibram Kendi on the one hand and on the other hand, you're fucking using the cold brew machine. I don't want to have it. Okay. It's just not going to be good. It doesn't have that oomph. You know what I mean? This shit, this coffee tastes like you've never had a long conversation about the ethics of reparations. Or if you did, you thought about only doing it to white people. That's what this coffee tastes like. And I'm in Austin, so it's not like this is, uh, you know, this is the wokest part of Texas, dog. Oh, what the hell? And I sprayed it everywhere. If the barista don't have blue hair, I'm walking out. Coffee tastes like what about men's rights? Yeah, straight up, straight up. Coffee is the reverse of pie and barbecue. Exactly. Like, well, I guess like with, with pie and barbecue, like if you're black is different, but if you're white and you're making pie, you have to be racist. The more racist you are, the better the pie tastes. And with coffee, it's the exact opposite. You have to not just, you, you can't just say you're not racist. You have to be anti-racist. You know what I mean? The moment that you say like, the moment that you even entertain like all lives matter type attitudes is like when your coffee is going to suck. Okay. And, and you know this, like, white people are the goats at uh, making anti-racist coffee. <laughs> but you have to be gay. Like, you at least have to be a little gay. You have to have a little bit of marginalization in you. You know what I mean? You can't be... <laughs> you can't be, like, a straight white man making coffee without at least doing the work, okay? Doing the reading. Listening and learning. Sitting your white ass down and listening to, to figure out how to make a good coffee. This is it. This is the take that makes me into a hater. Okay. You are in North Mexico, so it's cafecito, not coffee. There's also something. Oh, my God. That's what it is. I was like, what the fuck's going on? Why is it spraying everywhere? They got them goddamn woke-ass straws up here, brother. What the hell? It broke already. It's like one of those like recyclable fucking saving the planet type straws. Gay. <laughs> the hell? What the hell? Yeah, it's broken. It broke immediately. Did you arrive in Texas to collect ankles or what, dog? Weirdly, barbecues made better by super racist, but then also incredible black owned restaurants are also next level barbecue. The white liberal cannot be allowed near meat. They suck. That's what I'm saying. That's the same equation for pies too. It's like you either got to be a person of color. You either got to be straight up. You got to be black or you got to be the most anti-black type of white person to make the best, most decadent meats. Like anything in between, it just doesn't work. Straight up. Damn, Hoss goes to Texas and becomes con conservative. Asthma gold effect going crazy. Yeah. Recycle, but not reducing the oil digging is psychotic. You're on thin ice. You're crazy. There's no more ice left. We're destroying the planet. Wait, this is not real, is it? Mike Tyson actually posed with a Palestinian flag? No, he didn't. This got to be fake. Did he actually? 
It's got to be AI. Dude, I don't know. I don't think it's real. Um, Did you see this man on the street interview in New York? Asked why they voted for Trump. Chance to vote on Tuesday? I didn't vote. And why did you not vote? Because I don't believe in the system anymore. And did you get a chance to vote on Tuesday? Yes! And who did you vote for? Trump! Ah, uh, the million dollar question. Trump. Uh, Trump. Donald Trump. Well, actually, the early voted. I voted for Trump. Honestly, I didn't vote. Oh, oh, Trump. She voted for Trump. I voted for Trump. I voted for Trump. Me too. Before I voted Democrat, at this moment, I voted Donald Trump. Dude, yo voy a votar por Donald Trump had an impact, dude. I I'm here to apologize, chat. I was wrong. Like, I should not have played. I should not have played. Ay, 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 por Dios. Yo voy a votar por Donald Trump. I played it so much. I played it so much that I think like, like the, the Latin X vote, okay? The Latin X vote went so overwhelmingly to Donald Trump because like all my, all my community is flexican. Like, as you guys know, everyone here is flexican as fuck. And I, I played that too much. I think I single-handedly swung uh, the Latinx vote. I'm just going to start saying Latinx going forward. Um, I've decided <sighs> for, uh, Donald Trump. I did that. Stop. I'm going back in time and vote a hundred more times. I can't, I can't stop it. My Latinos, you, you hear a fucking jam and you're like, shit, dude, this is too good. I can't stop myself. I can't stop myself. Clippers now got that slur proof. Zohran Mamdani, he's running for New York mayor. Yeah, he's awesome, but I don't think that's him. I think he's just, that's someone else doing a man on the street for him. Is it him? What is this? Do not play ball today. Canute is looking like he's going to destroy you. More believers has been putting in more points. We need more predictions. Metrodis were cut beforehand because he wants to make sure he's not looking stupid or ugly. Let's see, get in your. Anyway, offline chat was full of this cat time span for a week. You're bringing it back. Oh, it is all on himself. Hillside Avenue in Queens and Fordham Road in the Bronx. Bro, there ain't no way that man has cardio. Like, I'll just say it, okay? Like, listen, no disrespect, Canute, very hot, okay? His body is like tea. Girl, your body is tea is what I say to him, right? He'll be like, you're a stupid terrorist. I'll be like... It's fine. You're hot. Okay. You've put a lot of effort in your body and it shows your body is like tea. Okay. That's what I say to him, but I just don't think he has any, I do not think he has any kind of, uh, uh, cardio. Maybe he does. I don't know. But also I think the other part of it is that, um, the other, the other problem is that like, like his body has been built and primed to do one thing and and that is like push big weight, right? When it comes down to like basketball, you need a little bit of finesse. Like even raw strength in and of itself is not gonna is not gonna help. Bro, neither do you. No, I, I have I think I have a lot more cardio than most people do at this point. I play a lot of basketball. I mean you better draw 50 on these nerves. I won't. Everyone is all, I don't like that. There's high expectations. I don't want high expectations. I don't want that. Okay. I don't want that at all. Hold on. Uh, uh, let's see if this is working now. What the fuck? This shit is not working, chat. I don't know what it is. I charged it all fucking morning. It's...
is annoying. Did you bring that chair with you? No, they had it here, bro. They're rich. Stupid ass Target brand, dude. It sucks. The outlet's not dead. It turns the light is on when I fucking charge it. The light is on. It's just not charging it for some reason. Fuck. I hate this. Yo voy a votar por Donald Trump. Ay, 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 por Dios. Yo voy a votar por Donald Trump. It doesn't even turn on when it's like connected. You see the light is on though. The light is on, but it's just not working. Lights on, but nobody's home. I turn it on. Oh, wait. I saw lights for the first time ever. Look. One, two, three. Read the instructions, bro. Now, fuck that. I think the battery might be busted or something. I don't know. God damn, look at this. Look at my legs, dude. What the hell, dude? Look at this. Sheesh. Sheesh. People say I skip leg day. They're crazy. Oh. Yo. Um. You know what's crazy? Last time I was here, when I was staying in this house, last time I was here when I was staying in this house, I got, uh, I was so fat. It was a shit con. And I was so goddamn fat. And I wonder if there's any like uh, photos from back then. Is that Jesser shorts? Yeah, dude. I fucking everything I own is basically bricks uh bucket squad now. <laughs> I have so much bucket squad shit after that one collab I did with him and I love their stuff. Straight up. Okay. Put it in rice, it'll work, I swear. Dr. Mike collab? Dr. Mike collab incoming. Yes. Do you have slightly, you do have slightly high quad insertions, like show the full mass, you got to show a lot of thigh. It's true. It's true. Catch him at 80 wearing that shit. You should invite Nora and talk to her about how she broke Nick's uh, oh, ankles. Hey. Did it happen again? Yeah, dude, look at this, look. All right, no one's but... Oh, buddy's freaking out. He's in the outside. When am I coming on? I'm inviting Aiden Ross, so. Aiden Ross is invited to next year, guy? Who's that? <laughs> is that the guy you guys were fighting? The shoe guy? Yes. Shoe guy, you're invited to next year, guy. Damn, we were both kind of No, dude, fat. he called us band camp nerds. He can't fucking come to our jump castle backyard streams with Fireball. Dude, people here were chasing Fireball. I don't blame him for calling us Dan Kepner. Blame What? We are all losers. Yeah, but rich losers. So is he, but also it's like... Well, he thinks... The difference is that he thinks that he's cool. We know our place. He thinks that he's like a cool guy. I don't think anyone's cool. A test... Uh, obsessive. Like, look at this. Look at how fucking I look like a different person, dude. Even from my even from my stream, I look like a different person. You know what I mean? Yeah, I saw the OTK game day tier list, by the way. This is pretty funny. Once again, young Jeff doing the damn thing. Um, Giga Chat, Cypher, Gladiator, most likely to injure someone, misgive, most likely to get injured. Uh, we will get hate because they're here is the category they put me in. Um, which is fucked up foreign exchange students 
only here for the views will score zero points should be watching his kid instead <laughs> this stream was a, when i first found out who you were and started watching you wait really is more fucked up because they grouped you in with tech tone i know yeah that's like that's the crazy uh world that we live in where uh i am controversial for people in the same way that tech tone is and it's like yeah dude i'm sorry I, I think that there's like a level of depth of knowledge here there's a little bit of a knowledge gap here you know what i mean that's crazy how many how many packs of zin did you bring with you uh four Oh yeah, I saw I'm this. Sure you've seen it. Like it, memes it, of it. It's like the Shang Dai Yang Hong Yao Hong Kong Tong A. Shin Shang De Dai Yang Shi Ma Zo Dong A. Like that. Yeah, I bet Duke Dennis can't do that. That's right. That's right. That's right, Duke Dennis. It's on site. Let me see you sing Red Sun in the Sky in perfect Mandarin. Okay? That's different. There's levels to this shit. There's different levels. Okay? There's different levels to it. You don't have that kind of aura. It's called the immortal science of Marxist Lenin. His mouth is third world is aura. W's in the chat. W Maoism. <laughs> that is something I feel like I show speed would unironically say. W Mao. <laughs> w Maoism. <sighs> extra emily hired a professional coach two days ago was dropping basketball like crazy emily would surprise people commie riz with chinese characteristics yeah um anyway why are you mentioning duke dennis y'all are collabing or something i missed out on the start no he he just collabed with quinn after i did and he was risen her up in in uh ways that I would I could never imagine. You know what I mean? So I'm being petty as a joke. But yeah, look up like like I was saying, going back to this, like look at this shit. Mouse slap Jake Paul. I know this was so sick. Basically, comrade mouse slapping a social media star. Um, did you see Duke Dennis is running for president? He will be 34 in 2028. Yeah, I don't think he can run then. <laughs> I think you need to be, you, you missed it. You know, you need another one. <laughs> Communism is second world, not third. How does bro have a mouth tat but endorse Trump? Wait. Mike Tyson endorsed Donald Trump. I mean, that's not shocking to me at all, bro. It's fucking Mike Tyson. What are you talking about? Brother, it is Michael Tyson. Okay, calm down. He is... It's Mike Tyson. That's all I got to say. I'm just going to keep repeating it. Yeah. Didn't he say Mao saved his life? He also has a Che Guevara tattoo as well on his belly. On his belly. You need to see this, LaMafea. We've updated our enforcement guidelines. Um, what is happening? We have updated our enforcement guidelines. I think Twitch needs to stop caving to these fucking goons, okay? These little goobers that are cynically uh, crying about, like, hateful misconduct happening on a platform that literally has the most rigorous application of its own terms of service. It's crazy that the guys that are yelling are yelling from kick okay like it's such a overt 
it's such an overt and and cynical silly ass fucking thing And it's like people who are banned, by the way, I know people who are banned because they violated the terms of service are now attacking the platform and trying to do anything and everything they possibly can train coming for you. <sighs> Using the term to refer to a political movement, whether it's in a supportive or critical way, does not violate our hateful conduct policy. As a part of our hateful conduct policy, we prohibit the use of term that may not be harmful or abusive in isolation, but can be used as a slur to denigrate others in certain contexts. In line with that approach, starting today, today, using the term Zionist to attack or demean another individual or group of people on the basis of their background or religious beliefs against our rules. We recognize that Zionists or Zionism also refer to a political movement. Using the term to refer to the political movement, whether in a supportive or critical way, does not violate our hateful conduct policy. Our goal isn't to stifle conversation about criticism of an institution or ideology, but to prevent coded hate directed at individuals or groups of people. We include examples of the language we prohibit in our enforcement here. So I think it's like, you can't say like, uh, going forward. Um, okay, like chat. You do realize, like, you're all going to get banned, right? I mean, it's fine. If you want to get fucking banned, you can get banned. I know that you disagree with this, and I disagree with it as well. But there's not really anything you can fucking do. It's just, it is what it is. Twitch is caving and capitulating to people that are 100%, 100% doing this cynically in an effort to literally, in an effort to, to basically hurt the platform that they were banned from, okay? Move to kick? No, I'm not going to move to the fucking pedophile Nazi website, dude. Get the fuck out of here. People are so stupid. Yeah, dude, I know. We should we should move to kick a platform that definitely has a rigorous application in terms of service. You just can't use Zionism as an insult. And that's what, or Zionist as an insult is what they're saying. They're gonna, they're, it's, it is what it is. You just got to fucking... You just got to live with it, okay? I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. There's nothing I can do about it. All of this, like, cynical, all of this, like, cynical smear campaign with mass hate emails being sent to every advertiser, like, all of this brigading from institutions that normally don't give a shit are not, like, actually genuinely offended or anything, but just don't want any fucking drama whatsoever are are uh going to have uh repercussions and this is what i've been like this is what i've been talking about over and over again saying that like these guys literally have tried to forcibly trigger an apocalypse and and are uh making twitch like they're they're forcing twitch to just you know be punished how do you regulate that uh, like no matter what happens i'm not one of these people that's like even if it's even if it's something that's stupid okay and this is this is a stupid uh a conduct uh enforcement policy it's uh really vague and it's really difficult to to truly figure out like how to use it but like the reality of the matter is if you say fucking fascists, okay, no one is going to get, uh, no one is going to get mad at you. So that's what I will continue to do. That's it. I don't think that, is it bannable to call terrorists, uh, others, uh, terrorists based on their background? No, it's not. You want to know why it's not? Because Islamophobia is institutionally permitted. Hello. Welcome. Okay. Understand the world that we exist in. Wake up. That's it. There's not really much I can do about it. It is what it is. <sighs> Read the examples it gives under enforcement notes. It seems fine. Where is it? Um, the language used to car, uh, da -da 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 review, we want to make sure that our hateful conduct policy continues to be flexible and cover terms that may be used to cause harm to others. We'll continue to evaluate. Yeah. I just think that like, 
they're 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 caving to um they're caving to like the well zionism uh, people use it as a catch all to say all jews and what they don't realize is when that happens right when that happens then the same people that have been fucking crying about it are going to turn around and say, look at all the times where they were talking about Zionism. This violates the policy. Why haven't you banned this guy? I'm telling you right now, it's like a two-step program, okay? That's precisely what they're going to do now. They have all the they have all my chats logged, like my community's chats logged. They're going to go back to the advertisers and be like, Twitch is not following through on its own enforcement policies. Look at all the times when like people have talked about Zionism the political ideology and Twitch itself now recognizes Zionism as a, uh, as a, as a different way to say, you know, Jewish person, um, which is not true. Right. I have talked over and over and over again under very academic settings about these sorts of, these sorts of values. Like the hilarity of the situation is this is unironically what conservatives used to complain about when they fantasized about like college campuses, not letting, uh, free speech uh, uh, exists in an environment, and they're doing that. Like, there has never been a moment where I haven't specifically offered context, like historical context or analysis in this sort of stuff it, uh, when I'm covering these sorts of issues. And yet, it's so easy to just like rob it of its context and just be like, no, this guy is anti Semitic. This guy is hateful. And then basically fucking repeat it over and over and over again. And like bully advertisers as well, who are afraid of political content regardless. And then Twitch is scared of of uh, massive losses of revenue, or even like Amazon, you know, um, coming down the hammer uh, and and striking Twitch in a meaningful way. So they just like cave. It's it's people very cynically using uh, a lot of these organizations' lack of. Uh, interest in getting into any controversy or putting themselves out there in any meaningful fashion. Uh, it's, it's basically them, uh, you know, caving to this. It's caving to like very clearly cynical losers who are, are, uh, falsely smearing people as like anti-Semitic from a platform that has like literally straightforward Nazi shit, like a platform that houses Nazis. You know what I mean? Like these are kick streamers yelling about fucking Twitch. It's so obvious what's going on. Like, and it's not like, it's not even hidden. You know what I mean? Look, this is from their own, this is from their own fucking subreddit, right? The, the guy who's doing this, Dan can't stream. He's like the main guy. No bad tactics, only bad targets. They would just as soon use these methods on you. Strategy number one of the CIA when they want to topple a far slash left government is to create infighting. You are not MAGA enough. You are not a real freedom fighter. To my knowledge, the CIA doesn't engage in canvassing operations or advocacy. This tactic should have been left to the autism squad or whatever the secret DG operatives call themselves. Destiny may lose credibility as an advocate for democracy if he allows or supports his community in sharing information with fascist, anti-democratic democratic media figures. Turning the fascist machinery against itself is a fair game. It's effective warfare, and I completely disagree with your high road take. This is when they were talking about going to libs of TikTok. Libs of TikTok, Haya Raichik is that fucking transphobic loser that they were collaborating with. And his own community was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you working with these fucking fascists to try to take down Twitch? And he basically was like, I don't care. I just want to take them down. I will work with whoever I can. I've heard... It, they have a Tom Cotton collab in the works as well. And it's like, that's it. You are having one of the most far right orgs take down far left content, both of them hating Jews, creating huge stress for the moderates of both parties and forcing both to want a distance from them. The meme of this is a weapon of the enemy. We do not need this for anime. In real life, we pick up the proverbial gun and shoot the motherfucker. <sighs> yeah. Not just yelling, but also engaging in Islamophobia in the process of calling out hate speech. Very weird. They aren't going to stop until Hassanabi is banned. They straight up said it, lol. I know. And, like, they don't care. That's the worst part about it is that, like, look, in, the, in, their, in their endless, like, interest of, of getting Destiny unbanned, which is, like, what Dan openly said he wanted to do, or get me banned, one or the other, right? 
Um, they're basically fucking destroying this goddamn platform or trying to destroy this goddamn platform. And it's fucking crazy. And no, Twitch will not die soon. I know everybody always says this dumb shit, but um, no, I don't think I don't think Twitch is going to die soon, guys. I don't think that like a bunch of a bunch of fucking loser brigaders are going to cause the entire platform to collapse. It's just like I said, it's still very, very fl uh, frustrating. Um, it's very frustrating to see that like these guys are basically botting mass email campaigns, talking about how anti-Semitic the platform is over and over again. And it is the least anti-Semitic out of all the fucking platforms out there. And I say this as someone who combats anti-Semitism on a regular fucking basis. And I'm losing my mind because the people that are doing it are literally collaborating with Nazis on the fucking platform with actual Nazis. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, and, and in the process, they're like, like, that's the other thing. There's like a shit ton. There are a shit ton of Jewish content creators on, on Twitch. If you were to ask them personally, and Nandre can attest to this as well as many others, they would say that like, this is an infinitely more, uh, an infinitely safer platform than all these other places. And these guys that have been banned for violating those fucking terms of service are so mad so butthurt that they can't stop being fucking edgy that like they want to blow it up and destroy the platform and fuck over a bunch of Jewish content creators in the process as well as everybody else. Creative mischief. You're missing this part. Oh, here prohibited example. Zionist name of animal allowed example. Zionist settlers keep encroaching uh, Palestinian borders. Yeah. We prohibit the use of terms that may not be harmful or abusive in isolation, but can be used as a slur to denigrate others in certain contexts. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, similar to terms that may be used as a proxy for protected group, we treat Zionists as a proxy for Jews or Israelis if the word is used in a context to promote harm or violence or when used to make dehumanizing comparisons or perpetuate anti-Semitic stereotypes, comments regarding Zionism that are about the political movement, including criticism, do not violate our hateful conduct policy. Comments that call for violence against Zionism as a political movement or comments that would otherwise violate our policies are not allowed. Okay? So that's it. You can't use it as a pejorative. You can talk about it as a political movement. And I know a lot of you are going to want to try and use it as a pejorative. And every single person that's like saying that right now, every single person that's like using that as a pejorative is getting logged. You're most likely going to get banned from the platform. Okay. Not only are you going to get banned from the platform, but before you get banned from the platform, Destiny will use the things that you're saying in the chat uh, and his community will use the things that you're saying in the chat to try to get me banned from the platform as well. I'm just letting y'all know. Twitch is going against UN resolutions. Um, no, it doesn't matter. They're not like as aggro and they're not doing, um, they're not, they're not going as aggro as like the IHRA definition. Okay. Literally like saying you can't say Nazis are bad. No, it's not like that. You can say Zionism is a harmful political ideology. I agree it's dumb to capitulate, but it also seems like it's the same as the Wheat Thins controversy, so at least they're being consistent. Maybe I'm off base. It is no different than the Wheat Thins controversy, except this time uh, when uh, most people look at like anti-white racism as a fucking joke, uh, anti-Semitism is real, unlike uh, anti-white racism or whatever the fuck. So obviously, while most brands don't have a problem uh, with the term cracker. Okay. Uh, when you establish guidelines and rules about, uh, Zionism in this way, and you basically say, no, the framing that like Zionism can be a, a, a catch all or a substitute for, uh, Jewish people, then yeah, a lot of people will, will also agree with that. Like a lot of there's, there is no institution that is going to uphold anti-white racism, okay, or or take it, uh, treat it seriously. But of course, anti-Semitism, unlike anti-white racism, like saying the word "cracker," is not is, is a real thing. Anti-Semitism is a real thing. It's a real historic wrong, right? And I think that's what it is. So yeah, when when you say stuff like that, this is a good this is a good example of someone who's gonna get banned, okay? Like. And I banned them as well personally, but you can't do that. You like, that's it. 
thank you for demonstrating what kind of uh, speech now is not allowed on the website. Imagine being 40 and throwing a publicly broadcast tantrum like you're four. Yeah. Pig dog is also an anti-Jewish slur, apparently. Jew here, I didn't know this. Yeah, I didn't know that either. The only time I've ever heard that being used is when someone says capitalist pig dog. But apparently... That I've heard this as well. I did not know that, but um, but apparently it is. Do you listen to Glorilla? Yes. Glorilla's uh, uh, Llama Llama freestyle has been stuck in my fucking head. New update. Terrorist is now a protected term. You can't compare a terrorist to an animal. Yeah, like... Uh, holy shit, I just realized they're going to try to get you banned when you say hogs. Uh, maybe. Maybe. So how does this apply to calling people a Nazi on Twitch when we know they get heard about anti-white racism and Nazi can be conflated with white people, particularly Germans? Um, I think that it's it, it's not going to be. It's not. I researched it. Wait, is it? Bro, the other day, Asmongol said, Chaz said, based at a Jewish conspiracy theory. I wonder if any of them got banned. No. Pig dog is a slur against capitalism from China, Vietnam, and previously USSR is well documented. Yeah, I've never heard that like... I've never heard that being used in like an anti-Semitic uh, fashion, but people are saying it is. So I don't want to fucking, um, I don't. And, and for the record, Nazi is not a protected class. So, and fascist is not a protected class. So that's, you know. Just so you understand, like, the, fear not. You can still shit on Nazis and fascists in general. We haven't gotten to that stage yet. It isn't on the Wikipedia slur list. There's a Wikipedia slur list? I guess there's a fucking Wikipedia for everything, huh? Seeing the stuff about Infowars not actually being sold or Alex Jones posting, though it seems odd, like I'm guessing it's just more bullshit. I don't know. Anyway, America is done. If you had the means to leave law, what do you mean you don't have Medicare? Surely playing the Twitcher terrorist game is also bannable, surely? No, of course not. Wait until wealthy people or people of means becomes a protected class. Um, your middle name is a slur? Wait, really? list of slurs that's crazy my middle name oh my god 19th century and origin uncertain perhaps dugan wait for irish catholics calling them dogan is a slur that's crazy i did not know that well my last name is as well that's not even a joke yeah see irish travelers and romani people and vagrant lower class poor people did you guys know that Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's so funny uh, that my middle name and my... I didn't even know my middle name was a slur, technically. But my last name is. I knew that. Um, but yeah. I guess the only thing I can say... The only thing I can say is this. Uh, you know, it's going to go away eventually. You just have to wait it out. You know, it sucks. And I wish that these guys would like spend their time and efforts on something else, but they're not going to stop. Especially when like, when, when an institution actually caves to this kind of like cynical framing, they get a taste of it. Like there's a reason why it compounded since like, uh, since, uh, the a Rap's podcast got banned. Right. Because if someone is just constantly going, um, this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, and the platform doesn't actually offer it any sort of, uh, you know, any sort of serious 
illegitimateness, right? It's illegitimate. And I know this because, like, these guys went to the New York Post and, like, every fucking outlet they possibly could with this story, and no serious outlet took it seriously. They were like, okay, this seems like yet another instance where you are conflating anti-Zionism with anti-Semitism. We're not going to cover it, right? So it was always, like, illegitimate uh, uh, propaganda rags that were, uh, you know, engaging in it. But... That's neither here nor there. Like, like the only people that would like take this kind of shit seriously uh, was the likes of Richie Torres, right? <laughs> and it it was it would never have been a thing, but then Twitch took action against the Sabra Hummus tier list. And then when Twitch took action against the Sabra Hummus tier list, just like the cracker thing, right? It became a serious situation, right? It became a serious situation after that. It's only real if a a like legitimate institution, uh, it's only real if a legitimate institution takes the cynical uh, framework seriously. If everyone goes, you guys are ridiculous, you literally have... You're, you're yelling from the platform that has, like, straight-up neo-Nazis on it. Shut the fuck up. How, how ridiculous of you. Then it, that, then it doesn't go anywhere. They can compound on it over and over again and just, like, manifest or, or I mean, fester in their own hatred. But it would never go anywhere. But then when institutions do take it seriously out of fear because they are worried then obviously in that process, obviously in that process, like now people are going to write articles about this, right? Yeah. Twitch apocalypse has begun following criticism of the platform for anti-Semitism, but nearly all creators uh, reporting a noticeable drop in their revenue. Interesting. Don't listen to this propaganda. They're not lying. All the phases complaining in the group chat. Yeah. I said this, I said this, I talked about this. I said, Asmongold, you're like uh, collaborating with these fucking losers is really dangerous territory. That's what I was referencing. I was like, you're, you're, you're playing with fucking fire. Like these guys want to tank the platform because they're just straightforwardly filled with hate. Okay. That's it. And it's not even necessarily just like Asmongold. Asmongold is just like another party in this process. Um, but it's it's basically the most straightforward way of someone cynically trying to do uh, a cancel culture. And I don't know why people don't understand it. Like, this has been, this is straightforwardly a Kiwi Farm style operation. They used to do this back in the day. Like, the Nazis used to fucking do this shit all the time. They would, like, um, dox people. They would do, like, mass email campaigns. Ironically enough, everyone thinks liberals do this kind of shit. But it's usually these guys. It's usually the 4chan guys that would do this kind of shit. Like... People who just say every slur known to man uh, would would so quickly utilize like liberal institutions and their interest in maintaining the, like this aesthetic of progress by um, by doing this sort of thing. Asmin's ban was the first thing that started it, man. You have to admit it. What do you mean? Admit what? Asmin Gold being banned for the the uh, their inferior cultures that deserve to be genocided would have been a normal application of the terms of service if his entire community, but it's not even him. He's just being used in this process. If Destiny didn't use that as an opportunity to be like, you know, let's bring in as many people to our cause as possible to fuck over Twitch. Like Ethan uh, slandering Twitch over and over again. Bro, Red Bar is coming after you. He's been hearing what you've been saying. Who the fuck is Red Bar? What?
Anyway, what is a red bar, dude? Oh. <sighs> yeah, and then you got the kick co-founder saying the platform will either beat Twitch or buy them out. Dude, if one more person asks me about Blue Sky, I'm going to fucking lose my mind, okay? Please, can you stop? I don't give a shit about fucking Blue Sky, okay? I'm not going on to Blue Sky, at least for the time being. Please stop fucking promoting Blue Sky in my chat or demanding that I do Blue Sky every fucking day. I'm like, hey, man. A lot of content creators are reporting a loss of revenue, a loss of ad revenue, as a matter of fact, from this direct like mass, uh, this this mass email campaign conducted by people who want to fucking destroy the platform because they're mad that they were banned from the platform. And dumb fucks in the chat are like, well, what about Blue Sky? Yeah, dude, I'm going to fucking stream on Blue Sky. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, I'm going to go on Mastodon. I'm going to go on Blue Sky. I'm going to go on Gab. I'm going to go on every fucking website. Shut up. Shut up. Now I'm in a bad mood. I was in a fucking good-ass mood when I first started. And now I'm in a shit-ass mood. Okay? Anyway. Here. Let's watch why people in, in the Bronx uh, voted for Donald Trump or didn't vote at all are two areas that saw the biggest shift towards Trump in last week's election. Even more residents go didn't vote at all. They like Trump up. because they don't want the Palestinian, the brothers, the killed, the war in Ukraine. Yeah, the Democrats giving all the money and the war. This is no good. The swing is because people want lower prices. They probably believe that Trump will give them that. Market price, all that. Uh, Energy, gas. La comida. Food. Most of these people are Working families, they're working one to two, three jobs, and rent is expensive. Foods are going up, utility bills are up. And that's your hope, to see a little bit more of an affordable life? Absolutely. What Trump did in the first four years, Fordham Road saw something where Kamala couldn't do that. There were young voters who didn't vote for her because of the genocide, and I wouldn't have voted for her if I did, but I did vote for her, obviously, because I have common sense. Can you tell me a little bit more about why you didn't vote? Since you're out here, you know, Gaza, who should I vote? Either side. We'll go ahead, send bombs from here to kill my brothers and sisters. Palestine issue and then uh, other issue is uh, like Russia and then Ukraine. He stopped that war. That's why I bought him. You can't say you're a Democrat and stand for the genocide that's going on in Gaza. Period. Practically, I like Democrat. I like Democrat, but it, uh, I don't like, like this. In Gaza, I mean, a lot of people that die. Have you voted for Democrats in the past? I have. And what would it take for you to vote for a Democrat in the future? Being able to pay attention to the regular Americans and their economic needs. They should make economics the forefront of their campaign. People were not really feeling it in their pockets. I voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. I voted against Trump also in the 2018 uh, midterms. Insulting us, playing on our emotions. All they do is shame you and they just want to use like glitzy campaigns and they get celebrities. And like if you're speaking the things that people want to hear about, I don't care what color you are, I'll vote for you. You know, we have a mayor's race coming up next year, and if there was a candidate talking about freezing the rent, making buses free, making universal child care a reality, are those things that you'd support? Absolutely. He'd have my vote all day. We need child care that is affordable. Buses should be free. The hike in the metro cards is, like, totally unaffordable. So my name is Zoran Mamdani. I'm going to be running for mayor next year. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. Wow. And I'm going to be running on that platform. Thank I'm going to vote for you. Your energy is... Thank you, thank you. Yeah. My energy is getting up to inflation. Hello. Look who it is. Chat, look. Look who joined me. Not the first nor the last time there's a dog behind me while I'm streaming. Hello, hi. Hi. He's old. He's very old. He's an old man. And he just fucking chills all day. He used to be... I think he used to be a lot more aggro. I don't want to block him, but... He used to be a lot more aggro back in the day. 
And now in his like old ass age, he's gotten uh, much nicer, I think. He's lost the Haas lost the plot. This is Texas. Nick Norakachi is all that matters. I know. I used to teach economics on the college level. It drives me nuts that people think you can lower prices. That's deflation. That's worse than inflation. Only way to get out of a hole is of an inflation is higher wage. No, I think there's uh, areas where, uh, you know, deflation is necessary. It's been done before. What's his name? Buddy. Yeah, ADL ADL liked it. They said in the time of dangerously escalating anti Semitism, we commend Twitch for changing their policy regarding the use of Zionists as a slur and proxy for hate against Jews. We are glad that Twitch acted on our recommendation to make this change. However, policy is only strong as enforcement, and we will be vigilant and appropriately skeptical about Twitch's enforcement of this new policy. When one of the larger streamers on Twitch, Hassan Piker, spends the hours uh, after the Amsterdam pogrom minimizing the harm without consequence, it's still the platform has far to go. It's like, dude, what do you want me to do? Tailor my news coverage to fucking lie? Like, I hate this. I hate this so much. Like, he just, they, they called me out by name, too. Like, that's insane. Like, why are you invested in this, man? You're the freaking ADL. Anti-Semitism is exploding all around the fucking planet, and especially in the United States of America. And you're over here talking about a dude who is not anti-Semitic, who fights against anti-Semitism so consistently because you don't like the way that he's covering shit. Like, that's insane. I, I, it's so gross. Like this is, oh yeah. They want me to, they, I, what, what do you want me to do? Fucking be like, Israel is the best. I'm sorry, guys. There it is. You got it. You won. Israel is the best. There's no genocide happening. Israel. And if there was one happening, it's good. Is that what you want me to say? Fuck man. I hate this shit. It is so deliberately like trying to stop real fucking speech, like normal conversations from taking place on this matter. It is so fucked up. It's so fucking insane. I feel like I'm losing my goddamn mind, dude. Fuck. Fizz, the ADL praised our team's moderation when we were helping AOC for how little anti-Semitism they saw in the chat, but now all of a sudden you're anti-Semitic? Yeah. This community has been so active in fighting against anti-Semitism, more so than virtually every other community online. And the reason for that is because we are very knowledgeable on this, okay? That's it. Many people don't even understand anti-semitism many people don't even think about it they don't they might say shit that is anti-semitic without even realizing it we don't even let that sh shit slide i use that as a educational opportunity all the damn time it sucks yeah, the ADL is doing all this when RFK Jr. just got nominated as an option by Trump. <laughs> you are the only one giving visibility to genocide in Palestine. You are an easy target between all the noise and distractions. Yeah. This is the same kind of shit they did to Jeremy Corbyn and it sucks. Yeah, and many normal people were like, yeah, I guess he is. I guess he is anti-Semitic. Like, people still think he's anti-Semitic. He's not. Remind that the ADL still advertises on Elon's Twitter. I know. Oh. Brains hurts. Thank you for the 20 tier gifted subs. 20 tier one gifted subs. Yeah. Meanwhile, the UN Special Committee finds Israel's warfare methods in Gaza consistent with genocide. Including use of starvation as a weapon of war. This just happened yesterday. 
Israel's warfare in Gaza is consistent with the characteristics of genocide, with mass civilian casualties and life-threatening conditions intentionally imposed on Palestinians there, the UN Special Committee to Investigate Israeli Practices said in a new report released today. Since the beginning of the war, Israeli officials have publicly supported policies that strip Palestinians of the very necessities required to sustain life, food, water, and fuel, the committee said. These statements, along with the systematic and unlawful interference of humanitarian aid, made clear Israel's intent to instrumentalize life-saving supplies for political and military gains. They trying to get you banned, buddy? Yeah, no shit. I know that. Is this D and Ethan? Yes. It's mostly Destiny's community. They're just using whoever they can. Uh, and, and Ethan is a, a willing participant in this. Yeah, similar shit happening with Ben and Jerry. Yeah, this was really funny. Bougie, I ben and Jerry's is gonna sue over Palestine. Their their uh their their corporation that they're under. Ben and Jerry's, by the way, owned by uh, uh Jewish people. For the record, like I believe, if I'm not mistaken, both Ben and Jerry are Jewish. They've also been a long supporter of BDS. Ice cream company Ben and Jerry's is suing its parent company, the British multinational consumer goods giant Unilever. Why? Well, Ben & Jerry's claims that Unilever silenced it from speaking out in support of Palestine. It also claims that Unilever threatened to dismantle its board and sue board members over the issue. Unilever rejects these claims. But in the lawsuit, Ben & Jerry says it has tried to call for a ceasefire, it has tried to support safe passage for Palestinian refugees to the UK, it has tried to back US student protests on Gaza, and it tried to advocate for the Biden administration to stop sending military aid to Israel. But in each area, it claims to have been effectively muzzled by Unilever. Tensions have been simmering between the ice cream manufacturer and its parent company for years. In 2021, Ben and Jerry's tried to take a stand on illegal Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank. Ben and Jerry said it would stop selling its products there as doing so was inconsistent with its brand values. So Unilever decided to sell its Ben and Jerry's business in Israel and the West Bank to Israeli licensee Avi Zinger, allowing marketing in the West Bank and Israel to continue. Ben & Jerry's responded by suing Unilever in 2022 to try to block the sale. That 2022 lawsuit, lawsuit was settled in the same year, and the terms of the settlement were not made public. But in their new lawsuit, Ben & Jerry's is now accusing Unilever of breaching the terms of the 2022 settlement. The brand says Peter Culver, Unilever's head of ice cream, that is a job, voiced concerns about, quote, the continued perception of anti-Semitism regarding Ben & Jerry's speaking up for Gazan refugees. The 2022 settlement also required Unilever to make a $5 million payment that Ben & Jerry's could donate to human rights groups of its choice. Ben & Jerry's picked Jewish Voice for Peace and the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations, amongst others. According to the lawsuit, Unilever wasn't happy with Ben & Jerry's choosing a Jewish Voice for Peace, saying it was, quote, too critical of the Israeli government. Now, Wait, relations, what? amongst others. According to the lawsuit, Unilever wasn't happy with Ben and Jerry's choosing a Jewish voice for peace, saying it was, quote, too critical of the Israeli government. Now, Unilever owns plenty ben of Jerry's popular household brand best, names. By the way, like they're, they've always been fantastic. <sighs> they're so sick. Like, I, look, man. I got I got so much love for you. I got so much love for you if you have been uh you know keeping up with this cause for years and years and Ben and Jerry's is like that. You know. They they're fantastic. They're incredible. I just wish that their ice cream was like lower calorie, I think. Um They're sick. Dumbass Foff unfollow. What? Why? Damn, dude. My man got so mad that I said Ben and Jerry's. I wish it had like lower calorie options as well. Like real low calorie options. Like I've seen their lower calorie options. They're still pretty high calorie. 
but it just wouldn't taste good um, if they did. But their stuff is so good. Yeah, here are the four anti-Semitic posts that Ben and Jerry said its parent company ordered it not to publish, okay? Here are the four Ben and Jerry four posts Ben and Jerry said its parent company ordered for it not to publish. Ben and Jerry's filed a lawsuit against his parent company, Unilever, on Thursday. It claims that Unilever stopped it from making four public statements supporting Palestinians. Unilever rejects the claim, saying it would defend its case very strongly. Ben and Jerry's taking legal action against his parent company. Here are the posts from the lawsuit. December 2023, ceasefire call. Ben and Jerry's claims it told Unilever in December 2023 they planned on issuing a statement calling for peace and a permanent ceasefire in Gaza. At the time, Israel was several weeks into a sprawling invasion of Gaza, retaliation for the October 7 terrorist attack by Hamas. Ben and Jerry's calls for peace and a permanent and a permanent and immediate ceasefire, the statement read. May 2024, visas for refugees. Ben and Jerry tried to issue another statement in May 2024 through its Social activists and managers in Europe. This one called for legal immigration pathway to the UK for Palestinians fleeing the war in Gaza, the lawsuit uh, said. Just like the UK did for Ukrainians, we asked for the government to urgently create a visa scheme allowing Palestinians to reunite slavery with their loved ones in the UK. June 2024, supporting campus protests. Ben and Jerry said it intended to support poor Palestinian college protesters in the US by posting public statement in June. It said the post would support their First Amendment rights, but the lawsuit did not include its text. In September, Ben and Jerry sought to endorse Bernie Sanders' resolution calling for legislation blocking $20 billion in arms sales to Israel. We urge you to join us in calling on the Senate to pass their Sanders' resolution and halt an additional $20 billion in military aid to Israel, the statement said. I like that people... My point is this, okay? People talk about how wokeism is dead, cancel culture is dead, we hate these identity politics. But if it's serving a, the interest of... If it's serving the interest of like reactionary goals, reactionary agendas, if it's serving the interest of like defending uh, an apartheid state, defending a genocide, or silencing critics of a genocide in an apartheid state, then everybody loves it. Okay. People use it, they love it, they don't even talk about it. It's really fucked up. Dropsite is reporting that Israel is systematically raping men, women, and children in Gaza. <sighs> Holocaust history professor Amos Goldberg says professor of holocaust history goldberg condemns all violence against jews but according to him the riots in amsterdam have nothing to do with the pogrom the problem is the genocide in gaza you know what's really crazy remember the uh the j street poll that i showed you of american jews and their opinion on ceasefire in gaza and a, and, and even denying arms transfers american jews overwhelmingly support that okay overwhelmingly over fucking whelmingly. And there are Jews in the Netherlands that are protesting against Israel right now. And it still doesn't matter. Okay? It doesn't matter. It's crazy. It's like we are not listening to anybody on this issue. It's like people are of one mind. They're like, nope, doesn't matter. Don't give a fuck. Have you considered that your takes might be wrong? Yes, my takes are wrong, even though they're in line with virtually every Holocaust and genocide scholar. My takes are wrong, uh, even though it's it, it's identical to the assessment made by every interna international instrument of justice. My takes are probably wrong because I'm against the American State Department's position on Israel. That's it. That's all you're saying. Everyone else be damned. American Jews are in alignment with me in overwhelming numbers on this issue, okay? But it doesn't matter. And this is something that I've said from the first day onward. I said this. I said, if every single American Jew tomorrow turned anti-Zionist overnight, okay, it still would not change America's calculations with Israel because Israel has nothing to do with Judaism, okay? It does not. 
It is presented as that. It is packaged as that. It is sold as that. And it is defended as as the the single most important thing for Jews and that all Jews are monolithic in their understanding and an, an examination of Israel. But it's not correct. OK, it's simple propaganda and it's effective propaganda, but it's propaganda nonetheless. And it's incorrect. It is anti-Semitic to claim that Jews are monolithic. It is anti-Semitic to claim that Jews all uh, exclusively care about and defend Israel. Okay? It is. And, you know, woke people do this as well. Woke people do this all the time. They also do this. And you know who else does it? More, even more frequently... Anti-Semites. This is why I never, like, when people try to do, like, uh, you know, 4 champions, where they say, like, Zionist occupied government or Zog or whatever the fuck, like, I don't, I don't let that shit slide in here at all. Because I also understand that there are, and I've said this time and time again, there are plenty of people... There are definitely a non-zero number of anti-Semitic people that have attached themselves to anti-Zionism. This is true, okay? One hundred percent. And if I catch you doing something like that, I ban you. It's that simple. And it's always been that way. I use it as an educational opportunity to explain to people why this is wrong thinking. But if you were to tell me like, oh, do you feel like you're maybe in the wrong? Do you feel like you're just wrong and, and uh, you know, the American State Department is right on this? Like, no, I don't. And the question, I guess, remains, which State Department? Because there are other uh, organs of uh, within the American State Department that also are in alignment with me. It's just at the tippy top, they do not care. You know? Yeah, this is one of the most like revealing aspects of being pro-Israel. Ben Shapiro, all the way back in 2015, after Ann Coulter said some horrific shit that is deeply anti-Semitic about Jewish people, Ben Shapiro tweeted, Ann Coulter tweets regarding Jews awful, nonsensical. Ann Coulter is also super pro-Israel and has always been so, so I won't lose sleep. Was State Department aligned with Hassan? No, it's not that they align with me. It's that, like, USAID, for example, obviously makes proper assessments on, on how dire the situation is on the ground. And they send those memos all the way up to Anthony Blinken, who then refuses to recognize it. He just refuses to, to acknowledge it. And it's that simple. You can now report people for terrorism now on Twitch. What does that even mean on an internet platform? I don't know, but I do know what that is going to look like. Any sort of conversation, any sort of conversation that talks about like militancy, resistance groups, uh, any sort of conversation that that you could have under normal academic circumstances, okay, about how uh, how terror organizations are designated as as terror organizations, what the, what the political application and the practical application of the designation of terror looks like. Okay. All of that stuff is now not allowed to be talked about. That's it. All of that stuff is nope. Can't do it. Not allowed. It's crazy. (sighs) Just don't be unaligned with U.S. foreign policy and you'll be fine. That's the message. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. But he's leaving. He's like, I'm done. He's like, I'm I'm done with this. 
<laughs> Any contingency plan if Twitch starts cracking down on pro Palestine streamers? I don't know. I'll figure it out. There's always... I'll figure it out. Oh, he's back. These kinds of actions, if kept quiet, like the the restrictions, in my opinion, look, a couple things. One, I think that uh, humanity has a slant towards justice, right? No matter what happens. Like, I think people know right from wrong. And even if they are deluded, even if they're deluded, everyone has a yearning for emancipation and they will always move in that direction. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, that's not copium. That's just how history has always operated. Please, dude, look at the circumstances that we exist under. Like, people talk about how fucking sexist or, or reactionary, like, Americans have gotten. And then, and then you compare it to, like, you know, the labor movement of the 60s and their assessment and their opinions back then. It's not like they were fucking woke back then. They were significantly more reactionary back then. So, yes, ultimately... Ultimately, there is absolutely, uh, there absolutely is a, a very valid, very real emancipatory concern that people have. And, and, and there is a, a more progressive slant, a more progressive arc to justice, no matter what. The moral arc of history is long, but bends towards justice is exactly what I was paraphrasing poorly here. That's it. Okay. The dog's name is Buddy. Bro, that's super childish. People hardly know right from wrong, and that's even without considering the existence of gray. No. I think I think when people see stuff like this, okay, they recognize it for what it is. Israeli authorities are responsible for crimes against humanity in Gaza. New Human Rights Watch report examines how Israeli authorities' conduct has led to the displacement of over 90% of Gaza's population and widespread destruction. You think people don't see it? You think people don't understand it? They do. And for the record... If you are familiar, look, I've been doing this for 10 years, okay? I've been doing this for 10 fucking years. I've been uh, I've been pro-Palestinian emancipation for 10 years. So I know, like, I, I know how worse, how much worse things used to be, okay? I'm telling you, overall, a lot more people are aware of the humanity of Palestinians and the plight of Palestinians, Okay? That's it. That is the reason why these kinds of reactions are occurring. It used to be so much worse, in my opinion. As the situation becomes uh, more and more indefensible... In the eyes of of many people, I think uh, I caught Jonathan Greenblatt hanging out with JDL Terrace at UCLA on a live stream from April. Since we're also concerned about the support for terrorists, here's ADL President Jonathan Greenblatt caught hanging out with the recognized terrorist organization Jewish Defense League during a live stream of mine from UCLA on April 28th. Yeah, JDL was founded by uh, fascist extremist Mayor Kahan, has committed countless terrorist attacks on U.S. soil and abroad. They were deemed a right-wing terrorist organization by the FBI. Joe Biden actually declassified them as a terrorist organization because they said that they are no longer, you know, uh, that they are no longer... <laughs> Uh, uh, what do you call it? They're, they're no longer, they're dormant. Do you want me to drive in, pick you up for game day? 
Um, I will be coming in a little bit later. The whole situation has made me completely lose hope in humanity. Guys, there is no... No, you can't be nihilistic, okay? You cannot be nihilistic in this moment, okay? That's that's what people want you to do, okay? Asmogold is right now talking shit on you and blaming you for a Twitch adpocalypse that he says is happening now. Oh, buddy. Oh, brother. Hmm. I wonder why he's saying that. Do not give in to apathy. Do not give in to nihilism. You know right from wrong. You keep fighting for it. You keep advocating for it. Okay? This too shall pass. Okay? This too shall pass. Nevertheless, that's it. You have to maintain optimism. And as someone who, once again has seen the uh as, as someone who has seen the trajectory change uh especially in the way that people understand this this situation you can't you can't let go you can't let go of the truth you can't let go of your advocacy because the reality of the matter is there are people in far worse conditions than we are and they live every single day. Okay. I will always use my position of privilege living in fucking America. Okay. As a white guy to, to speak for those who do not have a voice. Okay. Always. And you are in a similar predicament yourself. Okay. You are also in a similar situation you're in a much, you're in a far greater position overall than, than the people that you speak for, okay? And yes, there's a lot of resistance to it. Yes, people get fucking really annoying about it, but it does not matter. <sighs> what is this? This metaphor is almost a bit too support on the nose. Oh yeah, I saw this video. It's funny. Sir, do you support that flag or are you just trying to make some money today? What you think? I already know. Oh, God bless you. God right, bless you. What you think? <laughs> he said, what you think, man? <laughs> God damn. Anyway, do not cave into cynicism. What do you think about some lefty saying Trump will be better for us because he will erode and mismanage the American empire? I don't know who is saying that, but I disagree with them vehemently because the collapse of the American empire is not going to happen one overnight or in a swift way. Okay. I don't think that. I don't think that it's going to uh, be a just process and from the ashes, a, a you know, pro-labor movement is born anew. That's not going to fucking happen. What's going to end up happening is more fascism, more control, more violence, more devastation. Okay. Genocide defenders get even worse. Let's watch this. So that this video is a sequel to a previous video. I suggest you watch that video first for the full context. Hello, everyone. I would like to offer a sincere apology to all of you regarding my previous video where I denounced the YouTubers Destiny and Lonerbox for their support of the Gaza Genocide. I feel like I really let you all down and misled you with that video because both of them are actually a lot worse than I knew when I made it. Here's a clip that I actually just learned about where Destiny outright says that he thinks the best solution regarding Israel and Palestine is the complete genocide of Palestinians. 
Um, honestly, uh, I'm pro-genocide. I, like, it's not, it sounds really shitty, but, like, I think that Israel should just drop its fucking borders about where it is now, and basically, <laughs> Palestinians can go live in another place. That's, that's really shitty, but, like, that's about where I'm at. I don't know, you just think the Palestinians should just pack up and Native American the fuck out of there? The problem is that it seems like there is a hugely general hostility to Jewish people across really the entire yeah. world, but definitely the Middle East. So the problem is that as you weaken Israel's like ability for Jewish people to live there, it seems like there is a, because there's a lot of different organizations across the Middle East that are highly invested in the destruction of Israel. So that's yeah. like a really rough thing too. So it seems like if Israel is forced to make concessions to Palestinians, it threatens Jewish people's ability to have a homeland. And okay. if, yeah. So, I don't know, it's really shit. There, t truthfully, the answer is, like, there's no good answer. Um, it's hard. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's a really, really complicated situation. Okay. Well, because it seems, like, it seems like appeasing either end basically means, like, kind of the destruction of the other end. If you give yeah. the Jewish people what they want, Palestinians are essentially permanently cocked out of what they feel is their rightful homeland. And if yeah. you give Palestinians what they want, then probably a lot of Jewish people are going to die. Yeah. That's true. Now, you might say that he was just joking there, exaggerating, you know, having a good time. I'm not exactly sure how the genocide of the Palestinian people is a laughing matter. But hey, okay. But Lonerbox actually asked him afterwards if that was his real opinion. And he made it clear to him that it was. Because I rewatched the VOD before I joined in. And it did mm -hmm. sound like you were kind of saying that uh, you were asked what should happen. And I think you described it yourself as like having like a radicalized position. It felt like mm -hmm. when I was um, speaking to you about it in the moment that you'd kind of moved on to this just seems like the most likely thing. So Oh, I was the, saying, I think I was giving that as a counter to you saying it was a ridiculous position, but I do think that's, that's probably what should happen. I haven't heard a, heard a good argument for what should happen um, in contrast to that. Short of like everybody in the Middle East fucking chills the fuck out. So Destiny supports the total genocide of the Palestinian people, which was already obvious just from the sorts of things that he argues for, but you know, that's him outright stating it and then reiterating that, yeah, he does actually think that when he was specifically given a chance to dial that back afterwards. So Lonerbox has known for quite a while given that Destiny said it straight up to his face that Destiny wants to genocide all Palestinians. He nonetheless, has still, since then, been engaging with him more and more and more, and directly collaborating with him to the point that they are literally filming podcast episodes together in person. Now, there was not really any doubt that Destiny was a genocidal POS. Nonetheless, Lonerbox is happy to keep working with him. Lonerbox, someone who makes these moralistic attacks on other people all the time, he especially hates Hassan, and then his best buddy, his BFF, told him straight up that he supports genocide. It's only possible for you to work with someone like this after that, if you just straight up don't consider Palestinians human. And speaking I mean, of that's that what in it person- is. That, that is what it is. That's you, almost always what this is. And that's what it comes down to. And I think like other marginalized people understand this reality much better than anybody else here, but it's like, Unfortunately, many people don't consider Arabs, Muslims to be like full status human beings and consider them at most collateral damage that they can just turn around and say, mm, that's kind of sad about or uh, barbaric monsters that deserve to be put down. That's just the unfortunate reality. That's just how systemic, uh, systematic racism works uh, and Islamophobia and anti-Arab racism of this sort is exactly how this operates. Like, you might not... That's why when Asmongold got banned, I said it, like, Asmongold said nothing different than Bill Maher. The only difference is he said the quiet part out loud in a way that, like, Bill Maher knows not to, to say, right? But it comes from the same place. And whenever people talk about the plight of the Palestinians as though they are just, you know, monsters that... Like even their children uh, are, are are dying as like collateral damage because like some of them are monstrous. That is that that's coming from a place where like a lot of our institutions do not think that uh, that this is a wrong way to operate. Okay. Yeah, Islam is a violent religion types exactly. Billions of people, billions of people on the planet. Uh, who are Muslim, and they're all just, like, operating on this very violent agenda all the time. 
podcast thing they've got going on. Here's a clip of them talking very recently, which I think makes it even more clear just how callous and disgusting they are when it comes to the suffering of the Palestinian people. But they were trying to call you a pedo yesterday. So some kids are really they hot. dug in deep. Oh, <laughs> yeah. These are the people that are these are the people that are like working with the ADL, by the way. Just so people understand, like the people that are having this back and forth are the people that are working with the ADL to like combat anti-Semitism on Twitch, combat anti-Semitism on Twitch. And that is what is like led to a, uh, it seems a loss of revenue for a lot of content creators because of their like cynical, uh, because of their cynical need. Why do you just lie, lol? There is nothing I just said. This isn't about Islam though, lol. Why do you just lie, lol? I don't think I'll ever see the day when Hassan actually, and God. Just point to what I'm saying that's a lie and and we can have a more normal conversation about this. It happened in the same day that I was getting accused of uh, wanting to kill babies, like wanting to snipe them or whatever, fucking Israel. Some babies are really annoying. But it's like, how how can, how is it that we're both aligned then if like you want to fucking rape the kids and I want to kill them? I'm a necrophiliac okay, pedophile. That's the, that's the holy fucking center. After you kill them, uh, I have my way with them. Jesus. We could have had a better response there. We could have said it's just incompatible. Like, how can I be killing them? If you... Okay, or that. Oh, well, fuck it. <laughs> Did you get that? Now, if I was the same type of person that Destiny is, I would treat that clip not as him being sarcastic, but instead something that he's saying sincerely, especially because he has a track record of defending ethical CP. For example, ethical CP. Or he has a track record of, you know, routinely talking about how hot he finds 15 year olds okay he has said it in the past and he has said it recently as well because he's an edgy boy okay he's an edgy boy he loves to be into dark humor okay that's it that's the reason why he says stuff like that i don't believe that he was being sincere in that statement obviously i think that he is just saying that to show how edgy he is right you claim that every critique is simply because X person hates Arabs. That's just a lie. Yes, you're right. When people say uh, people who are pro-Palestinian, when they are being fucking slaughtered, are actually terrorists, that is uh, a valid critique of people who are anti-genocide and not pure Islamophobia. No, this is a new video. Very funny, ha 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 ha. So firstly, yeah, Lona Box, we all saw you justifying slash supporting slash downplaying Israeli soldiers shooting Palestinian kids in the head. Everyone saw it, okay? There is no tunnel that justifies shooting toddlers in the head. Israeli snipers. Does this guy not know how sniping jobs work? Like, the problem with sniping isn't, like, the accuracy is not, a, because obviously you've got your scope and the fucking, like, yeah, it's quite easy. You can accurately snipe, but um, targets and personnel move really, really fast when you're sniping. Like, snipers make their decisions in less than a split second in combat situations. So yeah, if people accuse you- I mean, here. Snaky debate tactics where he'll, he'll get cornered for saying some wild shit like molesting a kid is, is not, doesn't make you a pedophile. Like, it's crazy because Sneeko is like an open pedophile as well, for the record. Like, this is a, a meeting of the minds, you know? The guy who who the guy who who hates uh, uh, anti-Semitism supposedly file and then make it about Tate. If you want to walk through the conversation, we could do it. What do you think a pedophile is? Somebody who's attracted to kids. Yes. Somebody who's attracted to prepubescent children. That's what a pedophile is, technically. What's that's, right? what, that's what Wait, said, guys. you said to them for your way. If, if a 29-year-old if a fucks a 16-year-old, that's not technically pedophilia. They're not a child. It's just somebody who's no! a minor. Well, okay, th this is this is like a, a gross conversation that like infects a lot of people's mind with garbage. Instead of doing this debate, instead of gaming for t yeah, the, actually, it's a febophilia. You of that, they are a hundred percent right to. And secondly, it's not normal to make jokes like this about murdered children. It's not normal to sit across from a guy who sang this stuff and just sit there. And like try to cover for him at best at the end by being like, well, I would have hoped you wouldn't have said that. Rather than getting up, leaving the room and disassociating from him forever. 
This can only happen if you either do not consider Palestinian people human, which I think at this point there is an argument that Lona Box does not, or you are just such a pathetic grifter, so devoid of any of your own merit, that you are tying yourself to this personality to try and leech off of that audience to make some more money. Anyway, so let's move on to Lernerbox's attempted response to me. Firstly, Lernerbox actually caught wind of the fact that I was planning to respond to him, and he privated the VOD. Definitely the behavior of someone who is willing to stand behind what they say, willing to stand behind their beliefs, and who's not desperately trying to hide them because they know how bad it's going to make them look if someone actually goes over them. Unfortunately, I didn't think that he would do this, so I lacked the foresight to download the VOD, so I don't have a copy of it on hand. Nonetheless, I did take a bunch of notes regarding the things that he said that I wanted to respond to, and I'm still going to respond to them. I'll be summarizing his arguments, and if Lonerbox has any problem with the way that I'm summarizing these, I suggest that he unprivates his VOD so that people can go there and verify it. Firstly, Lonerbox only responded to my video because Hassan Piker covered it on his stream. I'm sure he was planning to ignore it if that hadn't happened, but Hassan is such a big platform that he couldn't really afford to ignore it. So thank you, Hassan Piker. You're being thanked by tanky, disgusting tanky, bad empanada. So he was responding to Hassan's um, reaction. I guess he has no problems anymore with me reacting to his videos, bitch. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, did uh, get thank Bozo? Yeah. Listen, uh, I, I've already I've already let my opinion on bad empanada be known. He is the most unhinged tweeter, but also an entirely different person when he's doing these very well sourced, very reasonable YouTube essay arguments. Okay to my video on him. Nonetheless, he did at least try to respond to some of the points that I made, though he avoided most of the video. He only responded to the first clip in which he tried to justify the IDF's mass shooting in the head of Palestinian kids, and then he skipped to the end to try and make a gotcha against Hassan, where he tried to cover for himself, laughing when Mehdi Hassan mentioned tortured and raped Palestinian prisoners from Gaza by claiming that Hassan had done the same thing, which is not true, and I will be explaining how. He skipped everything in between that, I'm sure because he knew that he didn't have a way to defend it, he especially did not have a way to defend his association with Destiny from the disgusting genocide propaganda that Destiny did in that video, which was a couple of levels <laughs> above what Lonerbox does, to be fair to Lonerbox. Though I would have loved to see his excuse for those. So here is my summary of the arguments that he made responding to me, and these are what I will be responding to in this video. Again, Lonerbox, just unprivate the VOD if you want people to be able to verify this. One, his first problem with my response was that I said that doctors in Gaza had seen hundreds of children shot in the head. He claims there is no evidence for there being hundreds of children shot in the head, rather only dozens. Two, he claims that he continued his argument and that I cut him off. He then goes on to reiterate this extra part of his argument in his response, seemingly thinking that it was impossible for me to respond to or something. We will be going over it here and I will be responding to it. Three, he then skips to near the end of the video, where he responded to Mehdi Hassan denouncing the kidnapping, mass torture, and rape of Palestinian prisoners from Gaza in Israeli concentration camps, claiming that his response was actually in regards to Palestinian prisoners from the West Bank. He then attempts to defend him laughing at that by dishonestly claiming that Hassan laughed at what he called raped Jewish women. 5. Lonerbox complained that he did not deny that there were systemic issues in Israel's conduct in the war in Gaza. He used those words exactly. He said that I am misrepresenting his position by making it look like he does deny that. So I'll be explaining here how all of that is a load of kablooey and how his response only dug the hole deeper. Okay, so now let's respond to Lonerbox's points. One, he claimed there is no evidence of hundreds of children being killed. So let me explain how I came to the conclusion that be. there were minimum at least 100 children who were killed. It's quite simple. One doctor said that he had encountered 13 separate cases of children shot in the head. The article then goes on to state that 44 different doctors who were interviewed by the New York Times saw cases of children shot either in the head or in the body. Now, so if one doctor saw 13 cases, do you think it's fair to assume that these other 44 doctors saw, say, at least two cases each? Because I think it is. If each of those 44 doctors saw two cases each, that's 88. 
Add 13 to that, that's 101. Hundreds, right away there. That is a completely fair assumption to make. In fact, if anything, that's going to be a vast underestimate, because this is only a limited selection of people who were interviewed by the New York Times. Not every healthcare professional was investigated, and surely not every child shot in the head has even been accounted for. So I'm absolutely justified in saying that there was at least 100, though the real number is likely far higher. And my grounds for saying that are completely 100% solid. This is something that these people do a lot when it comes to atrocities against Palestinians is they demand absolutely picture-perfect proof of everything. When they are willing to accept practically nothing regarding what the Israelis say about supposed atrocities against them. For example, and as we'll be going into further detail later in this video, Lernerbox is someone who still spreads this idea that on October 7th, Hamas mass-raped tons of Israeli women. He has never seen any evidence for that, even remotely as strong as this evidence for there being hundreds of children shot in the head by IDF soldiers presented in the New York Times, because such evidence simply does not exist. Yet he's happy to believe that. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't think the evidence of the rapes is as weak as you're making them out to be. It seems to be the evidence for it is about as good as it we can get for any conflict uh, in the past, and we, ones that we've happily accepted. Yet, in this case, he's like, where'd you get hundreds from? There's no evidence of that. I need perfect, picture-perfect proof. Actually, I need to see the corpse myself. I need to examine it myself. I need to get up close and personal with it myself. Otherwise, it never happened. But hey, let's throw him a bone here. Let's say that we can only use actual specific cases specifically mentioned in the New York Times article. That's still dozens. How many children shot in the head do you think we need before we can establish a pattern? Dozens? I'd say that's sufficient, right? The desperation in his arguments is very, very clear. Okay, so after that, he then moved on to claiming that I did not watch his follow-up, that I deliberately excluded it from the video. What actually happened is I let him talk, I let him finish everything that he was saying. These people often like to claim they're being clip-chimped dishonestly, even when you just let them speak for like two or three minutes at a time. And yeah, I'm gonna show it to you guys right now so that you can see precisely what I mean. But when Israel shoots children in the head, three American doctors went to Gaza. Dr. Fayyar Sidwa, Dr. Irfan Galaria, and a Jewish American doctor called Dr. Mark Perlmutter. All of them came back at separate times, said children were brought into hospitals we were in with gunshot to the head, sniper shots. Perfect. Exact targets. There is no tunnel that justifies shooting toddlers in the head. Israeli snipers. Okay. Does this guy not know how sniping jobs work? Like, the problem with sniping isn't, like, the accuracy is not a, because obviously you've got your scope and the fucking, like, yeah, it's quite easy, you can accurately snipe, but um, targets and personnel move really, really fast when you're sniping. Like, snipers make their decisions in less than a split second in combat situations. Unless he's suggesting there were just a couple of kids sitting on the hill and a guy opposite on a, in a building just went, got him, take him out. Maybe someone committed a war crime. But I don't think that's Israeli policy is to snipe kids for no reason, to snipe toddlers, but okay. You can tell us why. You can defend them. So this is where I cut Lonerbox off in my original response, because he had finished speaking and started playing the video again. But these people love to claim that they are being dishonestly clipped so much that you can let them speak and clearly finish their sentence, and they'll still claim that there's some sort of extra context that absolves them even when- By the way, What's really interesting about this kind of uh, thing, like this kind of like um, attitude that they demonstrate regularly, oh, I'm being clipped out of context, is that the context never actually makes it look better at all. But in the circumstance where they will, you know, put a suspiciously clipped 17 second video of me in front of a congressperson like Richie Torres, it's very obvious I'm actually saying the opposite thing that they're claiming I'm saying. And that's what's so hilarious about it. It's like always projection. Very famously, Congressperson Richie Torres uh, got this 17-second clip of, uh, of me where he was uh, claiming that I was saying like, oh, no, there's nothing like uh, the, uh, acting like I was. Uh, acting like I was claiming that there's nothing wrong with like uh, the, the mass rapes that Hamas had committed. And they clipped it in a way where uh, in a way to make it seem like that was my position that was not my position at all my position was that the violence that may have happened on october 7 and certainly there was plenty of it okay real or exaggerated does not matter does not justify genocide of palestinians okay 
He tried to make it seem like I was pro-sexual violence or that I was denying Hamas rapes happening or something like that. Whereas I never said that rapes uh, had, had not happened on October 7. As a matter of fact, that conversation was me talking to a random person and explaining to them why I do think that there are most likely sexual assaults that took place on October 7. So that's what's so crazy about the situation is that they will literally fucking clip it out of context to make it seem like I am the I am saying the exact opposite thing that I'm actually saying in that circumstance. And that clearly isn't. So let's continue listening to the argument that he makes following this one. Medi, um, <clears throat> Medi for, for, forgive me for, for going abstract, but I, Please. Do, I do want to go to some principles here. So you are listing a, a number of specific yes. uh, incidents that you feel cumulatively add up to a very, very much an overreaction. Yeah, did you think, yeah, yeah, IDF soldiers shoot each other as well. Yeah, <laughs> like IDF snipers kill their own soldiers. Do they do that intentionally? Is that just like, is that because Zionists are so anti-Semitic that they... <laughs> I don't even know what the argument is there. Okay, so I think a fair summary of his argument here is that if you think that Israeli soldiers are systemically intentionally shooting Palestinian kids in the head, as the evidence indicates, you must necessarily then think that because there is also evidence that IDF soldiers are killing other IDF soldiers in friendly fire accidents, that they are doing that intentionally. And he uses this like he thinks it's uh, like a, a great logic lord, gotcha, and I'm totally destroyed, and that's why I had to avoid it in my initial response. Okay, so, so here's the thing here. Here's the thing, Lona Box. If you believe that the IDF is systematically shooting Palestinian kids in the head, you do not also need to believe that IDF soldiers are intentionally killing each other in anti-Semitic hate crime incidents. That is the simple answer there. I do not understand how you possibly came to that leap of logic, that believing one of these means you must necessarily believe the other. I don't understand how you consider yourself like a logical genius debate lord. I don't understand how you could not only Starts the argument with their context never matters. Ends the argument with they don't care about my context, cry emoji. I think that um, applying a blanket statement like this uh, and, and refusing to recognize my, like refusing to recognize what I was saying is basically an admission of defeat. Like you've lost it. You've lost the argument. And now you are trying to... Uh, tackle a straw man a straw argument that you have cultivated i said in this video that uh that that bad empanada is engaging in that the additional context almost always makes it look worse he's doing that right now he's showing the additional context he's walking you through the extra context in this very moment okay He's doing it right now. I can give you many different examples as well. Like when uh, Destiny famously got, I believe, departnered for saying, I don't care uh, what the fuck happens. Uh, these right-wing militias need to mow down Black Lives Matter protesters. If you were to clip it there, okay, which many people did, uh, uh, you know, you would not get the full context. The full context of it was that the Black Lives Matter protesters were, in his words, rioting and doing the worst offense of all, which is harming Joe Biden's chances of being elected in 2020. That was the reason why he was in support of right-wing terrorists like neo-Nazis driving into crowds of Black Lives Matter protesters. Do you now feel like the context makes it more permissible, more appropriate? Or do you feel like the context itself is also pretty fucked regardless? Now, that's just a lie. That clip doesn't even mention Joe Biden. Wait, what? That was the, that is the defense that he is, uh, what? Okay, what's, what's your contextually appropriate uh, understanding of, of uh, Destiny's very famous statement? I was being nice. I was being as charitable as I physically, humanly, possibly can be. And one of his, a, a member of his own fan base is in here being like, nah, actually, nah, he just wanted to kill BLM protesters. Okay. <laughs> mm. 
make that point in your first video, but then go over it later in a response to my response and think that it was such a great point that you reiterated it as if it was something that I had intentionally avoided reckoning with because it was so strong. Like literally it can be dealt with by saying those aren't the same thing as I just did there. But let me explain more to you about why those very clearly aren't the same thing, okay? Are you aware that there are friendly fire deaths in every single situation involving armed conflict? Are you aware that there are not systemic, minimum dozens, more than likely hundreds of cases of children being shot in the head in every single armed conflict? Are you also aware that the logical assumption to make when a soldier kills an allied soldier is that it was an accident? Whereas the logical assumption to make regarding a civilian of the enemy population being shot in the head, not once, but in dozens, hundreds of different instances, is that it is being done intentionally. I'd like to just apply your logic to World War II, my friend. German soldiers couldn't have shot those Jewish civilians intentionally. After all, um, sometimes they accidentally kill each other? You should watch out for this strategy in general, but particularly you should from right-wingers like this, because it is one of their favorite ways of blurring the line between reality and fiction. When they find themselves backed into a corner and unable to actually argue on the facts alone, they draw a comparison between two clearly incomparable things that are vastly different and just confidently act as if they're actually the same and insist that if you believe one, then you must also necessarily believe the other, when that is not the case at all and you can just respond to that by saying, those are not the same thing. Now do you understand how it makes no sense that you insist that if you believe that the IDF is systematically shooting children in the head, that you must also believe that IDF soldiers are anti-Semitic when they accidentally kill each other? Learner Boxes fans, if you're watching this, honestly, I want to appeal to you here. I won't delete your comment, I won't argue with you, I won't insult you or anything. Leave a comment below here and explain to us how the hell any of you heard that argument and thought that it was a good one? How any of you thought that was possibly a- Motivated reasoning, cognitive dissonance, that's it. People are, uh, people are already primed to adopt this position, either because of their parasocial relationship with their debate daddy, or because they already feel that that was the truth. And it is much harder to re-examine your preconceived notions of how the world works, than it is to just go along with it and then say that everyone else that's telling you that's not the case is actually cynically saying that for some other alternative reason. In the case of Israel, Israel is the most moral nation on the planet. It's the only democracy on the planet. It's the only democracy in the Middle East. These are very common lies that have been told over and over again, right? And if you grew up with that kind of assessment or that uh, Jews would be defenseless if it were not for Israel... Um, and there is uh, obviously historical truth for why uh, Jewish people would want to have a nation state of their own, for the record, something that I also very readily recognize. When you, when you pair that up with like the real historic violence that Jewish people were subjected to, uh, whether it be pogroms or whether it be uh, the Holocaust, you arrive at this, uh, this, this unshakable conclusion, right, that Israel is good and the naysayers are bad. Now, when you look at why the naysayers are bad, you have to figure out why they would be bad. Are they, are they simply attacking Israel because they see that it is unconscionable to operate an apartheid state? It's simply unconscionable to, to kickstart the development of a nation state by uh, doing the Nakba, which is the ethnic displacement, forcibly uh, uh, ethnically displacing 750,000 indigenous Palestinians from their ancestral homelands? Um, or is it because of some other secret reason? And that other reason is almost always anti-Semitism. It's always anti-Semitism. That's the defense that uh, defenders of Israel apply to the, to the project. It is always people who are being anti-Semitic. Why do you care about Israel so much? Why do you care about Israel so much? Is it because you're secretly anti-Semitic? Or is it because you're openly anti-Semitic? That's the, that's the counter to it, okay? And it can't be that it's like, an apartheid regime that is backed by American tax dollars, right? It can't be that. It has to be, it, it has to be some other reason. It has to be some cynical reason. So that's it. Most people want a comfortable narrative that allows them to feel 
like they're not in the wrong. Yeah, gotcha. The desperation to, to justify what is clearly a systemic practice that has happened far too often to be anything but intentional is disgusting. But another thing that Lonerbox did as a part of that segment is that he accused me of dishonestly claiming that he denies systemic issues in the Israeli military's supposed conduct in the supposed war in Gaza. So let me just address that here. The problem is not that you do not specifically acknowledge individual instances of what you would think are excesses, or, you know, you would use some other euphemism. You're already using euphemisms out the ass. Issues in the first place is a... Man, what a mighty fine euphemism. You would never accept anyone talking about issues with Hamas's conduct on October 7th. So please, miss us with that shit. Yeah, I'm talking like the kids, okay? I'm talking like the little kids these days. I'm trying to be cool. I'm old. Just give me my moment. So yeah, that's a clear euphemism. But more broadly, what you've argued, specifically, I showed the clip in the, my original response. I'll show it again here. Tonight, you can choose to be on the side not of cruelty, not of criminality, but on the side of the innocent people of Gaza who are being killed as we speak tonight, as we speak, by Elon's former don't colleagues in the Israeli sub, military on the yes, orders of Elon's former bosses in the Israeli government. So yes, I choose to oppose this horrific prime. and homicidal motion. Thank you. I think the problem is, is that if you want to get, I'm trying to think of like how you would uh, illustrate what's wrong with what Mehdi's saying, is let's assume that every, in case that, that um, Mehdi put forward was true when he talks about particular instances. Chat, I know the ADL tweet. I saw it, okay? I saw it as soon as it was uh, dropped. Hey, ADL, y'all got any statement on how someone who said COVID was engineered to spare Jewish people is being nominated to be the head of he health and human services? We got... When one of the largest streamers on Twitch, Sean Piker, spends the hours after the Amsterdam pogrom minimizing its harm without consequence, it's clear the platform still has uh, far to go. Basketball stream is going to happen very soon, by the way. I'm going to leave shortly. It's like the WCK bombing or the person who was uh, the child who was shot while they were in a car or like all this kind of stuff. So uh, if they're talking about that, then it's kind of like saying that doesn't really you could also you could just argue none of that actually says whether or not the broad military campaign is justified or not. You understand that, right? What you argued there is that people cannot take all of the things that Israel is doing in Gaza, which really are most characteristic of what they are doing in Gaza, and that we are not allowed to put them all together to form an assessment of precisely why they are in Gaza and why they are doing these things, which is, you know, ethnic cleansing and genocide. Your strategy of genocide apologism of downplaying the genocide is centered around this idea where you try to frame Israeli crimes as sort of isolated incidents, or at best, some sort of like problem with systemic behavior, but in isolation, that is not broadly indicative of why the IDF is in Gaza in the first place, and why they are doing the things that they are clearly doing. You know, if someone's there in 1944 telling us that they agree that there are some systemic issues in the German military, yet also argue that the wider Holocaust isn't happening, that's still a Holocaust denier, isn't it? In short, you clearly believe that it should be impermissible to consider all of these things together. The reason why you might be happy to acknowledge a crime in isolation or even a systemic practice in isolation without connecting it to the broader campaign of genocide and ethnic cleansing is because for one, it just sells better. You can keep up this aura of fake nuance that you've got going and maybe pull into genocidal Zionism some well-meaning pro-Palestine people who don't know much yet if you are at least willing to concede a thing here or there against Israel, especially when the evidence is so ridiculously strong that you can't simply deny it, though you still do that most of the time anyway. And two, it's also because you know that if you actually consider it as a coherent whole, it makes it clear that it is genocide and ethnic cleansing, and you're trying to apologize for the genocide and ethnic cleansing, you're trying to enable it. It really is that simple, and it's ridiculous that you try to deny it. The evidence of this being your goal, of this being what you want, is just so obvious. It's clear from your immediate gut reaction to everything, just being to try and justify or downplay. It's blatantly obvious what you're trying to do. And you know why it's obvious? From a pattern of conduct. Not from taking one of your arguments in isolation, but from taking all the different arguments that you make that always just so happen to be apologizing for or downplaying the genocide in Gaza and putting them together to form a coherent whole. 
And that is how we can deduce that you are a genocide apologist slash enabler. Same exact thing with what Israel is doing in Gaza. Why does Israel keep bombing women and children and the elderly? Why are Israeli soldiers shooting a bunch of kids in the head? Why do Israeli soldiers keep uploading to their public social media profiles videos and pictures of them committing war crimes with captions that say like, hell yeah, we love war crimes. I love genocide. I love to kill babies. I can't wait to settle Gaza. Why is it that the IDF is just massacring people? Why is it they are, that they are massacring expelling people? Why is it they have destroyed most of Gaza? Systemic issues? Learn a box? Or is it because the ethnic cleansing and the genocide that they're clearly doing are the points? Is it because of a pattern of conduct that is clearly and easily recognizable that adds up to a coherent whole? Yes, it is. And this coherent whole is what you and your disgusting cronies specifically try to avoid. It's why you got so angry at Mehdi Hassan for taking a list of crimes and putting them all together to make a broader argument about what Israel is doing in Gaza and why they are doing it. Oh, and one thing that I forgot to mention in the previous section, after Lonerbox got done rehashing that argument about IDF soldiers shooting each other, he then went on to do amateur forensic analysis of the x-rays of the children with um, bullets in their heads. Those x-rays, by the way, which the New York Times said they had corroborated with actual pictures of the injuries, which they did not publish because they considered them too graphic to show. I personally think they should have published them, because then idiots like this wouldn't be able to try to deny them in this way, but they didn't. So he goes on to do his own little amateur forensic analysis of those x-rays, and he started claiming that they were either fake or that they were misleadingly presented. Basically the same conspiracy theory that uh, pro-Israel propagandists were doing immediately after their release, claiming that the evidence is false. So he was actually engaging in genocide denial that is significantly worse, I would say, than the um, I have to, I have to go, uh, to, to ball right now. And I think I'll be back later tonight to talk more, both about this and, and a bunch of other stuff as well, uh, after the basketball stream. So that's going to be, that's most likely going to be at, um, that's most likely going to be at, uh, br 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 at like around 4 p.m. Texas time. So that's probably gonna be like 2 p.m. Will you be on Nick's tomorrow? Yes. Uh, I will raid into Nick's stream right now. And I will, uh, cause I'm gonna be on Nick's stream right now. Okay. Uh, it's OTK game day. I'm gonna go ball my freaking face off. All right. And then afterwards, after I ball my freaking face off, <laughs> I will not embarrass you guys. Don't worry. I hope not. Um, I will come back and I will do. I will give you guys uh, uh, more takes and we'll finish this video as well. Love you guys and see you on the other side. Okay.